Now, who would have thought the Super Bowl would be an energy policy event, right? Uh, quite extraordinary to see it. But I think even before the Super Bowl, and, and by the way, I wouldn't trivialize that event, which I think you know, left a, an imprint about electricity and its impact on lots of people in this country, and uh, what they will not forget. But, but even before that, I think there was a moment uh, that commands us to pay attention to this issue and, and which provides some political opportunity for, for doing it. Um, I mean, the, 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 uh, for those of you who live on the East Coast, you live through this, but I mean, but Hurricane Sandy uh, was an epic event. It, it was, by the way, it was the largest Atlantic hurricane measured by diameter ever, 1,100-mile um, diameter. Um, and its impact was obviously devastating um, on the electricity grid, the fuel distribution system, and on, on the with tragic loss of human life. Um, but it underscored dramatically our need for investment in resilience in our electric grid infrastructure. Uh, so did the derecho that hit the eastern United States, the mid-Atlantic, and part of the Midwest this summer. Um, this got a little bit less press attention, but for those of us who live in the Washington, D.C. area, it was pretty dramatic. It happened on June 29th, which was the hottest the hottest June day in the history of Washington, D.C. The mercury hit 104 degrees, the hottest June day in the history of Washington, D.C., and about 10.30 that night, East Coast time, in Washington, D.C., and then a kind of a swath to the, to the west, a storm came up that within, within an instant, almost, with, uh, knocked out the electric grid for tens of millions of people. Um, it, it was, and uh, there was essentially no warning in contrast to hurricanes, so utilities were not deployed um, in any way. And, and as a result, we, at my, in my house in, in Northwest Washington, D.C., we didn't have electricity for a week, suddenly out of nowhere, as a result of that. And that experience was replicated for, for lots of people. It was, actually, I was in, I was in Baltimore uh, at, a, at a dinner, and a friend who I'd driven up with got a call from his desperate teenage daughter who was in Bethesda, Maryland, where where she had just, she was in a car and, and trees and electric wires had fallen down where she was and she was quite scared. So we decided to head out on the road, it's about 45 minute drive to go get her. And so we were on Highway 95 when the storm hit and just kind of out of nowhere on that June day in Washington, DC, there were 70, 80 mile an hour winds that came through. Was, I certainly won't forget it. Um, but the impact on the grid was, was dramatic. In India uh, this year, we saw the largest blackout in history. Um, uh, Another, the two other factors I think pointing towards significant attention to grid issues in the next, in, in the years ahead. One of them I haven't heard mentioned this morning, but is very important, and that's cyber threats to the electric grid. Um, we've actually, Department of Energy, convened utility executives to talk about this issue at very senior levels twice in the past, uh, in the past year, actually in the last the past six months. Um, the, the, threat is, the threat is real. Um, it creates very significant institutional issues. Some of, some of the nature of this threat is collected through sources and methods um, that, you know, by their nature can't be kind of broadly disseminated or disclosed, um, and the, but the res uh, by government sources and you know, often intelligence agencies. The response capacity is in the hands of the private sector by and large, which is why it was so important to get utility executives talking about this. And of course, in regulated utilities, often investment in this area requires appearing before PUCs, which creates its own challenge. So th th this whole issue of cyber resilience and the grid, I think, is going to be extremely important in the years ahead. Um, and then combine that with uh, the hugely important issue around renewables integration in the grid. And I mean, just in it was October 2011, I think Excel, for the first time, um, had 50% wind generation over the course of a single hour. Um, we've seen in Southern California, um, solar at you know, r record levels on the grid and um, new protocols for renewables integration in the grid are gonna be incredibly important. Um, and so you combine all these factors, I think the weather related resilience, cyber related resilience, renewables integration, um, uh, we're gonna have a lot of attention to cyber, to grid issues in the years ahead.